Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to Tech It Out, episode 129. We have a great show planned for you this weekend. Consider it part two of our look at the recent Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, which wrapped up last week in Las Vegas. CES, of course, is the annual show that's all about the latest in consumer electronics. So we're going to look at where we're going in the near future with all this cool tech. We're going to learn about a handheld medical device called MedWand. Asus will tell us about the world's first laptop with customizable LED lights on the outside of the lid. It's pretty cool stuff. Tech expert Amber Mack will join us this hour to chat about her picks from Samsung and other exhibitors at CES. We'll also catch up with iRobot to learn about its floor mopping robot. All of that and more coming up on this weekend's Tech It Out. All right, let's kick things off. Continuing on with our Best of CES 2020 coverage, I'm thrilled to have our next guest join us. She's a veritable rock star in the tech world. Amber Mack is on the line, a celebrated author, speaker, TV and radio personality, and much more. Welcome back to the show, Amber. I hope you've recovered from CES by now. (laughs) Yes, I I feel like we should all go to a spa somewhere after CES. It's that intense, but it's great being back on your show, Mark. And I'm sorry I missed you in Sin City. It's such a big show, so we didn't cross paths this year in person. But we are now going to talk about some of your highlights from this past show. So why don't we start off with a booth that you spent a lot of time at, which is Samsung. What caught your eye there? Yeah, so uh, I had a chance to uh, see the first look at Samsung, which was an opportunity to go to an event before CES even started. So what they unveiled at their first look was uh, their new lineup of lifestyle TV. So many people may be familiar with TVs like the frame that, of course, is that incredible screen that looks like a TV and is a TV when it's on. And of course, uh, looks like art when it's off because it's built around this great frame. They announced some uh, new sizes of uh, that product, I think that a lot of people will love, like a 32 inch, which, as you know, Mark, for a lot of people in condos and smaller spaces, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, they also unveiled uh, a new television that uh, turns on its own based on the type of video content that you're watching. So you you probably saw this on social media. I feel like it got the most uh, attention. It's a, a TV. So if you're watching vertical videos on TikTok or Instagram, then the Cero TV will turn into vertical mode. Uh, if you're watching regular videos, then it will turn back into uh, the landscape mode. So uh, a lot of people had a lot of opinions about this one. Yeah, I thought it was a very unique take on television. So yes, usually when you're watching uh, a TV show or a movie, playing a game uh, or sports, you're you're watching uh, it in, in horizontal orientation, the, the typical landscape mode that we're familiar with. But then as you mentioned, when you want to watch content that is more vertically aligned, like, uh, I don't know, like an Insta video or TikTok, as you said, Said, will it automatically detect what it's seeing and, and rotate like it's it's on a hinge, like on a motor, and it'll do that, or do you manually press the button on the remote? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, depending on the type of phone you're on, it will manually do it. So obviously, if you're on a Samsung phone or Android device, it will happen automatically. If you're on an iOS device, that would be an iPhone, then uh, there is just one little short extra step in terms of uh, watching it in those two different modes and having the TV turn on its own. So it's quite seamless. I saw many people, reporters on site who were doing it. And it's kind of funny, Mark, because at first you think, okay, this is an unusual uh, innovation. But at the end of the day, if you watch The Next Generation and you have young kids like I do in in their preteens or teens, and I think it's fascinating to see how they watch content. And I know a lot of that content, whether the professional videographers like it or not, is in fact in vertical mode. Right. Yeah, no, I think it's. I always applaud a company that tries something different, whether it sticks with consumers or not, is another story altogether. But kudos to Samsung for trying something new, as they have in the past with other technologies. And this is uh, called the Cero again, S E R O. Exactly, that it's called the Cero. So uh, uh, again, I I think it's one of the things that I probably saw that got uh, the most attention, just because it was so different. And I think you're right. That's why CES is so great. You know, not everything is going to stick forever, but what we really need is these companies, big and small, who are really thinking outside the box. What did you see at the Samsung booth, or even before the show 
opened at their press conference that you think didn't get as much attention that you thought was super cool? Well, I, I think what I saw at the booth, which we call it a booth, but let's be honest, it was more like a wing <laughs> in terms yeah, yeah, of the true. actual physical yeah, space. It dominates much of the center of the central hall. Yeah, it, they have a massive area there. It is massive. And so I think one of the things that got quite a bit of attention there that uh, I was impressed with was their smart kitchen. So they had quite a bit of technology in that kitchen, uh, including something called food AI. So the idea is that uh, based on what products you have in your fridge at any given point, they have this artificial intelligence tool that would look within your fridge based on a, a camera and new technology. And it would tell you based on those products what type of meal you could plan. And I love this, uh, not just because I'm a busy mom, but also I think a lot of us, we waste a lot of food in our fridge. And this is a chance to make something out of the food that's already there. All right. So this is not out yet, but it's a concept, I guess, for a future Samsung fridge that it'll analyze what you're putting into it and give you some suggestions for recipes. Exactly. And uh, they've said on their website that uh, in terms of the software and the enhancements that we'll see, they expect a lot of this to be out in the spring. So you're right. A lot of the stuff at CES for people and familiar, of course, is in that concept phase. But I was impressed with some of the announcements that they said, hey, this is going to actually be out in 2020, which I think is quite ambitious. I, I also hope that the extension of this technology allows for things like acknowledging what food you're putting in the fridge. And if you've identified maybe an allergy in the home, it'll say, hey, just saw that you put a a jar of Nutella in the fridge, but you've identified a a tree nut allergy. Don't forget there's hazelnuts in there. Or that milk that you put in there is about to expire. You should probably order some more. Or you're out of orange juice, and this is something that you usually have in the fridge. Like all that kind of ancillary data that could be gleaned and then communicated back to the homeowner, I think is a great idea. Yeah, I think it really is. And so many of us spend so much time in the kitchen around food, preparing meals. So I just love the idea that the kitchen is getting smarter and smarter all the time. So I think that's one of the features that I was excited about. People maybe not as excited. Let's be honest. I I think there are other things at at CES that get a lot of attention. And uh, maybe the kitchen tech isn't always top of mind. But there's a lot of men, no disrespect to your gender there as well. So who may be more impressed by cars and fancy things. No, I'll I'll say, hey, I like to eat. So bring bring on the kitchen tech. All right, Amber. Well, before we go on to other companies that impressed you, one more Samsung question. I saw this like little rollable kind of like robot with a camera that follows you around the home. What was that all about? Because I didn't see it in person, but I read about it on social media. I did also have a chance to see that in person, and that is called Bali. And what it is is a, a robot ball. They call it a companion robot. And you can imagine it a little bit bigger than the size of a softball. It will essentially follow you around your home. It can interact with other smart home products. It can even keep your pet's company at home. So what I thought was interesting about this is not necessarily where Bali is at right now, but the possibilities of Bali in the future. We know that we have an aging population all throughout North America and around the world, and more and more companion robots are going to be part of the solution in terms of keeping people company, helping with tasks, interacting, those type of things. So it was neat to see something like Bali that could potentially be something that we see in the homes of people who, again, maybe needed that little bit of extra help. Yeah, I I love that as an aging in place solution. So imagine it detects that someone is lying on the ground and it it can call emergency services for you. You know, if it's rolling around and notices that the uh, homeowner isn't moving, that kind of thing, I think that that could be some interesting life-saving tech still a few years away, but uh, exciting nonetheless. We're chatting with Amber Mack, celebrated author, speaker, TV and radio personality. Let's move to other companies now. What did you think was really awesome technology that we may see in the near future? Well, one of the companies that I was really interested in is in the category of green technology. So technology that can help to really better the planet. And it's a company out of France called Living Packets. And what they've done is developed a high-tech box that essentially uh, collapses after you use it and can be reused up to 1,000 times. Now, from an e-commerce perspective, Mark, imagine and think back to the holidays, how many people were shipping boxes, cardboard boxes that just got thrown away, hopefully recycled. But we know we have a real issue issue here. So what I loved about what they did is this high-tech box even has a code that you can scan, you can track everything, you can even lock the box so no one can get into it. I'm thinking porch thieves at this moment. Nice. And, <laughs> uh, and and again, it, it's early days for this, but they're starting to get quite a bit of attention. And I think we're going to see more and more on the green tech or climate tech side of things in the CESs to come. Oh, cool. I like that. Anything else catch your eye? Well, 
th- there's a, a couple of things. Uh, one is accessibility tech. So I think um, the company called Ergo that's out of San Francisco was a fascinating one. They make hearing aids. And of course, you can imagine that even over the course of a couple of years, they've in- improved their hearing aids to help people be able to better hear. But more importantly, also, they are nearly invisible. So once you put them in the ear, you really can't see them. And um, I thought that was a really cool company to consider because more and more with accessibility tech, whether it's it's for seniors or, you know, even just for people who have issues with mobility, uh, we're seeing a lot of stuff that can help people. Delta Airlines, as you probably saw, they introduced uh, possibly working with these um, echo skeletons. So the idea that uh, a human would wear kind of what looks like a robot to help them better lift luggage and cargo. So again, um, accessibility, I think, was top of mind at CES as well. Awesome. Amber, is there a website you could recommend for anybody to see videos that you've shot from CES or maybe subscribe to your email newsletter? Where would you recommend people go? Yeah, so I I just did a roundup of my top picks at CES, and you can check it out over on Twitter at Amber Mack, and uh, it's uh, one of my recent videos. Amber, I always enjoy chatting with you. I'm sorry I missed you at the show, but I look forward to seeing you soon at, I'm sure, an industry event coming very shortly. Thanks so much for everything. Thanks so much for having me. When we return on Tech It Out, we're going to catch up with Asus, the title sponsor of this program. We're going to carry on with our Best of CES Part 2 on this weekend's Tech It Out. Glad you're along for the ride. We'll be right back. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Find the Tech It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Tech It Out. This show is powered by Asus, the company that creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, as you'll soon learn with our next interview. And that includes the company's line of award-winning laptops, desktops, monitors, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. Speaking of Asus, as promised, I caught up with them at the recent CES Consumer Electronics Show to chat about a very cool laptop coming out by mid-year. I'm with Sasha Krohn, who's with Asus, to talk to us about Asus's presence here at the show. Thanks for your time. Well, yeah, uh, thanks for coming over. Nice to meet you, Mark. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, let me know which products you want to know about. I really was gravitating towards the Zephyrus G14. This is not only billed as the world's fastest 14-inch laptop, but I love of the Anime Matrix, if that's if I'm saying it correct. Yeah. Please tell us what makes this laptop really cool. So for the Anime Matrix, uh, let's talk about the laptop by itself first. Yeah, um, we'll get to that after. That's on the outside of the laptop. Really cool about the G14 is, like you said, it's 14 inch, so it's really compact, super slim bezel, so almost all of the uh, lid is screen when you open mm-hmm. it up. It's mm-hmm. almost all screen, very slim bezels. It's not just compact, it's also really lightweight, so it's super portable in the sense of it's only 1.6 kilos, very durable. It's uh, made from magnesium aluminum alloy. That's how we're able to bring the weight down to 1.6 and uh, still have it really sturdy. Yeah. But uh, when you look at it, I mean, uh, we, we, we have to describe it, right? Because this is a podcast. Um, it doesn't really look like a gaming laptop. So the design is very simplistic. Um, it's it's very subtle mm-hmm. and um, looks pretty stylish. Pretty and it's nice. only, what, 18 millimeters thin? 17? Uh, yeah, it's like 19, 18 millimeters okay. thin. Yeah, Because right? usually, with a gaming laptop, you trade a bit of, of style and, and weight, right? It's usually they're bulkier uh, because heavier. of that. Heavier, they're louder yeah, uh, yeah. because it's almost like a desktop replacement. Right. But here, there's no sacrifices, right? It's, it's right. got that power and the performance that you want, yeah. yet it's relatively thin. It's not as thin as my ZenBook 14 that I have, right. my Flip, right. uh, but it is really thin for a gaming laptop and, uh, and, and remarkably lightweight for all that power. Right. And the cool thing is, uh, while it's not as slim as an Ultrabook right now, a few years ago, you still would have considered this an ultra book. Yeah. But there's an RTX 2060 graphics card in mm. here with mm. ray tracing support, and it has an eight core CPU, super high performance CPU. So that all just means it can really handle those fast paced games, especially if you like to play competitively online. You want right. that edge, right? Right. And it's also for content creators. Everybody's talking about creators these days. So anybody who does audio processing like you do, 
uh, anybody who does like three D rendering, mm -hmm. animators, architects, even like YouTubers, like shoot and cut their own video on the fly. Yeah, video editors as well. If you do like video editing, you shoot a four K video, you want to scale it down to full HD resolution, mm -hmm. or anyone who does like really heavy uh, lifting, he wants like right. a mo mobile portable workstation almost. Okay. So it's really powerful, but slim and light. So let's now talk about the enemy matrix is what it's called. So this is, I think, one of the more unique differentiators with this laptop compared to really any other one I've seen. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is a really new thing. I don't think anybody has done this before. So uh, there are two versions of the G14, as in the regular version that's uh, 18 millimeters slim, and then there's one that's 19 millimeters slim. Um, that one, the slightly thicker one, is a little bit heavier as well, but it has an LED display built into the lid of the panel. So basically the backside of the panel. So when you open up the laptop, Top, you can't see it yourself, but everybody else can see it. And uh, on that LED panel, we call it the Enemy Matrix panel, there's over a thousand tiny LEDs, and you can run anything on there. You can write any text, you can run animated GIFs on it, some animations, you can have date and time on it, some notifications. You can see that you just received an email, for example, it shows you like the envelope icon. You can do pretty much anything with it. So again, because this is radio, we're talking about the lid. So that, like when you open up this clamshell laptop and you're sitting across from a buddy it's what your buddy sees on the right. back of your screen uh, and that could be your if you're in a gaming clan like you're in a, in a yeah. an, on a team you can have your logo there it could be right. static or it could be a gif as you said or gif where it's animated uh, or have words on the screen or see notifications and uh, that is something that you can all customize within the laptop of course right and uh, you you see a lot of people putting stickers on their laptop lids right so they they want to customize their system make sure it's theirs. It's very recognizable. They can yeah. express themselves, who they are, what they like. So it's kind of like a fashion statement in some sense and like a personality statement. Um, so with this, since it's digital, you don't have to like peel off the sticker or put another sticker on top, which is what most people do and mm -hmm. just keep putting more and more stickers on top. With this, you can keep it very nice and clean. It just looks like a normal laptop at first and then you can turn on the Enemy Matrix display and put anything on there that you want. I can see that being a big uh, conversation starter. Imagine and you're at your yeah. favorite coffee shop and on the back of right. your laptop you have a steaming cup of coffee digitally with yeah. all those little LEDs or maybe a basketball bouncing with the uh, logo of your favorite team. I right. mean, that can really spur some conversation. Right. Or well, let's say you see somebody uh, looking at you in the coffee shop, right? So you can send them a message. You could <laughs> like, like tell them, yeah. uh, call me and put your phone <laughs> right. number on there or something like that. You just have to make sure the right person that yeah, actually picks true. up on it and calls you. <laughs> all yeah. right. So again, that's called Enemy Matrix. So this laptop, once again, and we're talking with Sasha from Asus, this laptop we've been talking about that made its debut here at the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show is the Asus Zephyrus G14. So from what I understand, it's coming out by mid-year and pricing under 2000 even though you're not, Asus is not confirming you know, exactly what the, the price point is going to start at. And you can go to Asus.com or is there an ROG site you'd recommend to learn more about it? If you go to Asus.com, there is a way to read out directly to the okay. ROG website. Sasha, thank you very much. Sasha Krohn from Asus. Great chatting with you and have a great rest of your show. Yes, same to you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Tech It Out. Want to follow Mark? Google it. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out with technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out on the Radio America Network. Hope you're having a great weekend so far on this mid-January weekend. Or maybe you're tuning in as a podcast and it's not a weekend. All good. We welcome you to the show, whether you're one of the 87 radio stations that pick it up on terrestrial radio or on demand via your favorite podcast platform like iTunes or Google or Spreaker or TuneIn or what have you. We're thrilled to have you along. It's one thing to have your floors vacuumed by a robot. What a time we live in, right? But what about having them washed too? Well, it is possible with the Brava Jet M6 floor mopping robot from iRobot. To learn all about it, as well as info on the latest Roomba S. 9 Plus, we're joined on the line by Brent Hild. He's the Senior Product Manager at iRobot, based in Bedford, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Welcome to the show, Brent. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? 
great. Well, I know you had a busy CES and you uh, won an Innovation Award uh, honoree, a nod, which is uh, great. You'll maybe tell us a bit about that. But before we talk about the Brava Jet M6 and what's new with the Roomba family, smart home tech overall is super hot right now. But iRobot has been in this space for a while now. So tell us about your products and how they can help us live our lives better. Yeah, absolutely. We've certainly been in this space for quite some time. Actually, we introduced the first Roomba going on 18 years ago, so back in 2002. Wow. I think what makes them so successful is it's taking a, a daily chore that uh, everyone has to do, you know, either vacuuming or mopping your, your floors, and uh, it just takes that away so you don't have to deal with it and essentially mm-hmm. kind of buys back time for you uh, to spend it uh, with your family or whatever else is important in your life. And with the Roomba family of floor vac robots, as well as the product we're going to talk about in a moment, the uh, Brava Jet M6, you don't need to even be at home, right? I mean, I know it's one thing to initiate it with the with the app or with your voice or by pressing a button on top of the uh, of the device but you can even schedule it to do its thing when you're at work for example or when the kids are at school correct Absolutely. It's designed to run without human involvement whatsoever. So it's, you know, really Colin's vision when he set out to design Roomba and Brava was he wanted robots that were autonomous. And we designed these robots to be as autonomous as possible. So you don't have to worry about it because if, you know, you're spending all your time fussing with them, then it's not really doing its job. You could just do the cleaning yourself. So and just to bring us up to speed, who's Colin? Colin Angle, the CEO of iRobot. Okay. So now let's chat about the Brava Jet M6. Tell us all about it. So the BravaJet M6 is really kind of an improvement over the BravaJet 240, uh, a product we introduced back in 2015. Uh, the BravaJet 240 was really designed with a single small space in mind, like a, a bathroom or a kitchen. Um, the customer feedback on that product was very positive. They loved it, but they wanted it to do more. And so we took that to heart when we designed the BravaJet M6. And so we basically made a slightly bigger robot that can clean a whole level of your home. Um, And in order to do that, we had to put in a lot of additional features in it. We had to put in smart navigation like we have in the Roombas. We had to put in uh, a larger battery and uh, basically the intelligence to allow it recharge and resume. And of course, we wanted to improve upon the cleaning. And uh, so we have a a whole new set of both disposable and washable slash reusable uh, pads that you can use for cleaning. Mm. This is a floor mopping robot, the Jet M6. This is not a Roomba. Correct. Yep, the BravaJet M6 is a floor mopping robot that does either wet mopping or dry sweeping. Okay. And can you clarify a bit about the pads underneath that you were just talking about? So you both have a a wet and a dry solution and a one-time use and reusable option as well. Yeah, so for for dry sweeping, we just have a pad that basically mechanically locks and captures in dirt and dust uh, as it goes around. It doesn't spray anything. Um, It just goes around and captures it in the pad. Um, For the wet mopping, we have, again, like a washable or a uh, single-use pad that slides underneath, and the water jet will spray water down in a very controlled manner because, obviously, we don't want to spray on walls or furniture or anything like that. We just want to get the floor. Mm-hmm. And it will go through and mop the entire space. All right. So it sprays a cleaning fluid, which I know you get like a starter bottle in the box, uh, in front of the Brava Gen M6, and then it uh, drives over it, if you will. And it, it, the idea is that it's for hard surface floors now. So we're talking like tile or hardwood. And the Roomba, which of course is the floor vacuuming robot, that can do carpet as well and and other uh, surfaces. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Okay. And does the Brava Jet M6 know not to go on carpet or do you need to set up a perimeter in the app? Which leads me to my next question about the intelligent mapping because that has really changed over the years. It It wasn't just like it felt its environment and it will navigate around objects. It can still do that but now you can it's actually smarter in how it maps out your home uh, the mapping is pretty incredible, but to answer your first question first, um, the BravaJet M6 knows uh, it detects carpets, and so it knows not to spray it mm-hmm. um, or go on and try to clean it. So it, it, uh, you don't have to worry about marking it off separately. Um, that being said, our mapping technology has a Evolved significantly. Uh, it's really started off in 2018 with the introduction of the Roomba i7 and and has progressed with the introduction of the S9 Plus and the BravaJet M6. Um, now, as compared to uh, like our older 900 series, which would go out, map your floor, uh, map the floor of your home, and come back, and it would just simply forget it. The new robots, however, will actually remember your uh, remember your home, and it's it, it's pretty incredible, and it really actually 
actually changes the way you clean. Because now you have a robot that not only remembers your home, but with a little help from you in terms of providing context, uh, you can actually specify rooms within your home. So you, you, you'll get a floor plan, you'll get a map, and it'll, and it'll kind of create what what the robot thinks the rooms are, and you can go through and adjust those floor plans and then label the rooms. Mm -hmm. And then once you have it labeled, you can just literally say Roomba, well, if you have like Alexa or Google Home, you can say, Alexa, tell Roomba to clean the kitchen. It knows where the kitchen is, so it will just go out there, clean, go back and dock and be done. Love that. We're chatting with Brent Hild, Senior Product Manager at iRobot. We're chatting about the new Brava Jet M6 floor mopping robot to complement the company's family of Roomba floor vacuuming robots. We'll learn what's new in uh, that space as well, the S9+. Plus. But before we continue on with the show, and uh, we will need to take a break in a moment and resume chatting with iRobot about the floor mopping robot, the Brava Jet M6, and the new Roomba as well. Do you use a floor vacuum? vacuuming or floor mopping robot i'm curious to know if tech it out listeners use it at all you can hit me up on email which is simply tech at mark saltzman.com that's t-e-c-h at m-a-r-c-s-a-l-t-z-m-a-n.com or social media i'm on twitter instagram linkedin facebook and youtube so pick your poison and drop me a line let me know if you use any of these and why and if you do use a floor vac robot is it a roomba is it a shark is it a dyson as well as what you like and don't like about them curious to hear from you we're going to be right back with more Tech It Out. You're listening to the Radio America Network. Stay with us. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Check it out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, everyone. This is the second of a two-part CES, or Consumer Electronics Show special, where I'm looking at some of the cool and innovative technologies that debuted at the annual convention in Las Vegas. And of course, it's a look to the future of where we're going in 2020 and beyond. We're going to continue our chat now with Brent Hild. He is the Senior Product Manager at iRobot in Bedford, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. We are talking about the floor mopping robot, the Brava Jet M6. And we're also going to chat about the latest Roomba S9 Plus, I believe it's called, and what that robotic vacuum cleaner can do that perhaps others can't. But just going back to the Brava Jet M6 for a bit more, one of my favorite features is the wireless communication between a compatible Roomba and the Brava. Can you talk to us about that? New with the introduction of the S9 Plus and the Brava Jet M6 is imprint link technology. And so now you have robots that are working together to clean your home. Uh, it's pretty fantastic because it essentially cleans just like you and I would. So, you know, what you would ideally do to, to get a really deep clean in your home is you would vacuum first and then you would wet mop. Um, with this, your robots can do it uh do it together. So you just set it up in the app. It's a it's a, just a few button presses. It's very simple to set up. And the Roomba S9 will go out, clean your home, vacuum everything. When it's done, it'll come back, dock. It will tell the Brava Jet M6, hey, I'm done cleaning. All the vacuuming is done. You can go out and wet mop now. And then the Brava Jet M6 will go out, wet mop, and come back and, and uh, finish the job. Awesome. All right. So that works with the Roomba 900i and S family. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a really neat feature that uh, seems to get a lot of attention and uh, understandably so. Okay, so let's wrap up on the Brava Jet M6. How much does it cost? And then let's uh, chat about the Roomba S9 Plus. The Brava Jet M6 is four ninety nine ninety nine in US dollars and it's six forty nine ninety nine in Canadian dollars. Okay. And that's for the Jet M6 floor mopping robot. And then the, you get a couple of pads to start, and then you can buy them, and they're pretty affordable as well. You just snap them underneath. Yep, that includes uh, wet and uh, wet mopping and dry sweeping pads, as well as a sample of the cleaning solution. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can buy all of that uh, additional accessories uh, separately at retail. All right, now let's pivot and talk Roomba S9 Plus. Tell us about this, I guess, top-of-the-line robot that you've created. Uh, yes, the Roomba S9 is our most sophisticated and uh, amazing Roomba we've ever created. Um, it, and it has all the benefits of the Roomba i7, which we introduced back in 2018. So that means it has the smart mapping technology. It also 
means it has the clean base automatic dirt disposal. So uh, you don't have to worry about emptying the bin after every time it goes out and clean. It just docks on the base, and the clean base sucks the dirt out of the robot and stores it in a bag, uh, which takes months to fill, so you don't have to worry about changing that Amazing, yeah. um mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's it, it really changes how you clean it's it's so nice the other big thing is we've just really taken cleaning to the next level with this robot that's that's really kind of the core uh reason we we did a redesign for the room s9 and part of it is suction so uh we have a lot more power we have 40x the suction of a 600 series so it's, it's our most powerful vacuum um we have superior or edge and corner cleaning so basically we've taken the the cleaning head um, that does all the cleaning on the Roomba and we've moved it to the front and made it wider so that way it can go through and clean not only um, you know do deep cleaning on carpets and 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 your hard floors and stuff like that um, but also allows it to get really close uh, along edges and into corners and we have a new design corner brush that really goes in there and grabs the dirt and feeds it right into the cleaning head mm-hmm. And then we have what we call an anti-allergen system. So it captures 99% of the pollen and mold allergens um, are trapped and locked inside the bin. Um, and then we've created a, a near-perfect seal between the robot and the clean base. So all of that, uh, all of those allergens that are trapped inside the robot then get successfully transferred into the bag inside the clean base and aren't re-expelled back into the air. Wow. It sounds like it's really has evolved over the years. I remember the first generation robot or two, it was it had trouble with corners. And, uh, you know, you had to still go and manually get the corners, but it was still like, hey, cool. But like 95% of the rest of the house is done, you know. Uh, but then you, you, you licked that problem by adding uh, another brush underneath. And now even better than that, you can now have your robot self empty its own bag of dust and pet hair. And, and you only need to remove that ever so often. Then it can wirelessly communicate to the mop to follow up after the vacuum. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. How much does the Roomba S9 Plus cost? The Roomba S9 is our most premium of products. It's thirteen ninety nine ninety nine in the U.S. and it is sixteen forty nine ninety nine in Canada. Okay, and then for both that product and the Brava Jet M6, uh, what website would you recommend to learn more? If you want to find out more information about either the Brava Jet M6 or the Roomba S9 Plus, just go to irobot.com and click on the link, and you'll learn all about it. All right, Brent Hild, Senior Product Manager at iRobot. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. You're listening to Tech It Out on the Radio American Network. This show is powered by Asus. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, including its line of award-winning laptops, desktops, monitors, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. And as we talked about earlier in the program with our guest from Asus, recorded at the recent Consumer Electronics Show, they also have a really cool gaming division called ROG or Republic of Gamers. Whether you're a gamer or maybe a parent or grandparent of one, no doubt you're going to hear a lot more of that brand going forward. ROG, they have some pretty amazing gear, like you heard about that Zephyrus G14 with the uh, Anime Matrix lid that has over a thousand little LEDs that can be customized, which is uh, really, really cool stuff. When we return on Tech It Out, we are going to wrap up with MedWand, a handheld medical device that won an award at CES. We'll be right back. Follow Mark Saltzman on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Well, congratulations, Dr. Samir Kamar, for winning Last Gadget Standing. You are one of the two finalists who won this coveted prize every CES. And tell us about Medwan, the winning entry. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Medwan is a very unique medical device with which you can be examined medically anywhere in the world over your own computer. So it's a small device, though, that can do several readings. Uh, I'm not a physician. I know you are. So maybe you can walk us through some of the things that it can do via this telemedicine solution. Absolutely. So it's the size of a computer mouse. That's easy to sort of imagine. Perhaps it fits in the palm of your hand. You can put it in your pocket, in your purse. And there's a wireless version that's coming out. Otherwise, it's tethered to your computer with a USB port. And it has 10 diagnostic devices, the most commonly used 
diagnostic devices in today. Uh, it has a stethoscope, so the doctor can actually listen to your organ systems from a distance. Wow. It has an otoscope that goes into your ear, so the doctor can actually see into your ear. It has an ophthalmoscope that can look into your eye behind your pupil into your retina. It has uh, a dermatoscope that can measure lesions, track lesions over time. It has a throat illuminator, so I can look down your throat, check out your tonsils, and so forth. Uh, it also has a thermometer, a non-contact one, so you don't have to wake up sleeping babies. It has an EKG to detect heart rhythm abnormalities. It also has several vital signs, including an oxygen level sensor, a respiratory rate sensor, and a heart rate sensor as well. It sounds like science fiction, but you're holding one right now that can do this. And this isn't just to be clear for self-diagnosis. You still want to have a physician on the other end of the line, so to speak. Is that right? That's exactly right. Artificial intelligence is going to become a big part of our lives in the future, but it's still being perfected. Right now, the clinical judgment and the art of medicine plays a very big part in medical diagnosis. So it's got three different modes. You can actually do a self-exam if you happen to be medically knowledgeable uh, or have a, somebody in the family who does that. So you can do that, and you can actually record all your own vitals, store them, forward them to whoever you'd like. It also has a, a live examination mode where I, say as a doctor, could actually examine you anywhere in the world in live time over the computer. And it also has an assist mode. So let's say a nurse is with a child in a daycare center The nurse can put the device where she needs to or he needs to, and then the doctor in some other city can also provide supervision as well. Amazing. But the idea is that you're sick in bed. Why leave the house if you don't have to? So the idea is that your physician has to be game as well. Do they need any knowledge to walk you through MedWand? Well, not particularly. Most of the medical devices that are in MedWand are quite commonly used today. Doctors already intuitively know how to use these medical devices. The only training they might get is minimal on the software side, and it's it's really simple. It's basically a, a light bar that you slide up and down like a ruler if you want the light to go up on the patient side or down. There's a manual focus. There's an autofocus, for instance. It's it's just it's very easy to use by design. Yeah. Tell us about how much it costs and when it's available. So it's going to be available later this year pending FDA approval. We're not anticipating any problems with that whatsoever. On day one, we invented MedWand. On day two, we called the FDA. So that's not an issue at all. When it does come out, it's expected to cost around $399. U.S. And uh, you'll be able to get it everywhere. All right. So three ninety nine for MedWand. I've been chatting with Dr. Samir Kamar. Congratulations on winning Last Gadget Standing. Well deserved. Thank you, Mark. MedWand really was a game changer. It, it definitely was one of the most impressive things that I saw at CES. And I know it's not new. In fact, when I started researching it, I noticed back, I think as far back as 2014, 2015, uh, Dr. Kamar was uh, generating some buzz about this product. So it's still not FDA approved. So I hope it's going to do well, um, you know, pending all that approval and uh, you know i just wrote about it for aarp so uh, i i have some high hopes for this product and you might have noticed that i mentioned at the beginning of the interview that it was one of two products that won last gadget standing for the first time in 20 years the last gadget standing crowned two first place winners based on the uh way that the voting works with the audience participation and uh, it was almost even Stephen with the uh, way that the microphones picked up all the hoot and hollering and everything it was a tie so congratulations to Medwan as well as last week we talked with the gentleman from Ambassador that wearable language translator if you remember that it also won last gadget standing so hence the uh, two winners in two weeks interviewed on this program you're listening to Tech It Out I hope you enjoyed this week's second and final part of the CES Uh, special. I wanted to look at the best of the Consumer Electronics Show, not just from my vantage point, but also interviewing guests like we spoke with Amber Mack earlier in the program and Mario Armstrong last weekend on the show. We also spoke with Asus this hour. So let's wrap up on that. They are the title sponsor on this program. I'm very grateful through their support that this uh, show can happen. So Tech It Out is brought to you by Asus, creating technology for today and tomorrow's smart life. Asus, for those in search of incredible Visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. I look forward to chatting with you next weekend on this program. If you have any feedback for me, you can hit me up on social media. I'm at Mark Saltzman, Mark with a C, S A L T Z M A N, or you can email me at tech at marksaltzman.com. And if you're so inclined, you're listening to the podcast version, please feel free to leave a review and tell a friend or two about it. I appreciate the support. All the best, everyone. Speak to you next weekend on Tech It Out.